Well, I really don't know what to say anymore. I don't know what to say. Look at this. Unbelievable. Leslie. Poor Leslie. Leslie is like the neglected child of meteorologists, I guess. She has been hanging out in the Atlantic, I don't know, for a month as a tropical storm just sitting there. Right? Okay. We have tropical storm Michael that they are manufacturing, whipping up. And wow, look at Michael's track. I guess Michael started here, went straight up north, oh, then decided to go a little southwest. Oh, now nah, I'm going to go back north. Uh, northwest. Now nah, I'm going to make a sharp right to the east and then go on up and hit the panhandle, go through Georgia. South Carolina, North Carolina, and I'm just going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, hit Virginia a little bit, but there is a mainstream media our, uh, video that was posted today how Maryland, you were going to be getting a lot of flooding Maryland. They're already talking about Maryland getting flooding from Tropical Storm Michael that I guess, well, what will it become? Category 4? Good old mainstream media. Hurricane Michael track could become Category 4 28 minutes ago. Hey, why don't we listen? Come on. On a day like today, 84 right now at the Raleigh Durham International Airport. The sun's going to set in less than an hour. 82 in Wake Forest, 81 in Chapel Hill. Look at the sun getting ready to go down. 82 in Cary. <coughs> Excuse me. It's 82 in South Hill, Virginia. 81 in Roxborough. It hit 91 in Fayetteville. What's going on? I mean, it's still September warmth here in October. <clears throat> A couple showers around Greenville, but they're not moving anywhere, not anticipating any rain. As you can see, those little showers will be dying out. So we're going to have uh, some mostly clear skies for a while, and then some low clouds and fog will build in late tonight. But let's, that's tonight. We're done with that. Let's look ahead for the week. Warm and humid right through the work week. It's going to finally feel like fall next weekend, but probably what's got your eye right there is the tropical moisture Wednesday and definitely Thursday. And oh, my, that's the opening oh of the state. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Well, the reason why I wanted you to listen to that is because it has been unseasonably warm in North Carolina and in South Carolina. In fact, a couple of days ago we had, well, it was no joke, 6 p.m. when I asked a neighbor, do you know what the temperature was? She has, I guess, an app on her phone or whatever. Well, she looked at her phone and said, well, it's 91 right now at 6 p.m. Now, it really is very unfortunate that oh, we have we have the majority of our fellow Americans in a condition where they simply just will not will not even engage in conversation about how they can Make it warm. <laughs> Make it warm. Well, why don't I do this? Just go to my playlists and geoengineering chemtrails weather modification. And on that playlist, I have videos. wrong. Come on, computer. Uh, let me see if I can get this open. Okay, good. Um, I do have videos. Uh, 
and included in the video is evidence, documents, patents, papers on how they can increase heat, atmospheric heat, Let's see if I can at least get to that one about that atmospheric heat. Yeah, are you hearing, uh, I don't know, well, a tired voice? I am tired. I'm tired of nothing changing for the better. I'm tired of people just not listening. I'm tired of being in a war and watching people go down and uh, there's just no way to get that across, you know, to people who just, I don't know, want to just continue their delusions and believe whatever the hell that makes them feel comfortable. Heat waves already and all you need to know that it's temperature modification induced by man. 20 minutes of documents, papers. But there are more videos in which I yeah, I show how they can induce atmospheric heat. It's really, truly unbelievable that we are living this. So back to our joke of a meteorologist. Let's listen to him talk about Michael becoming a Category 4 hurricane fair, but we could see rainfall depending on the path of Michael from one to three inches of rain. So we still have Tropical Storm Leslie that is moving to the oh, southeast Leslie. now. It's been around for a Leslie, she finally gets some attention. A week or so, but... A week? Uh-uh. Sorry, buddy. Guess you haven't been checking out your satellites and radar. Leslie's been there for a very, very long time. Far longer than a week. And I would say about a month. What we're watching is Tropical Storm Michael. We told you last night this would form. Sure enough, it did. Tropical Storm Michael is off the coast of Mexico, staying hopefully away from Cancun and Cozumel, and uh, moving toward the north. It'll probably slip right between Cuba and also uh, Mexico. And the computer models are interesting because here's what's happening. See the yellow? You're going to see that in a moment when we show you uh, the National Hurricane Forecast track. It's to the east of most of the tracks, which I find interesting. And also the model that we like a lot, you know, you've heard the European model. It's the outlier that has the storm a little bit to the east, but it does have the storm moving slower, meaning what it's saying is we're not going to see anything until Thursday and we'd have rain on Friday. All my other models I looked at are showing this storm well to the northeast of us on Friday. And that appears to be the train of thought from the National Hurricane Center, because here we go. Tropical Storm Michael. North you notice how he ignores the tracking of this. And how did it take that sharp right to the east? Now, he's not going to talk about that. Will Americans even notice that? Mm, probably not. Northeast of Cancun tomorrow. Unfortunately, it could become a Category 2 storm. Move ashore sometime Wednesday afternoon near Apalachicola, Florida, somewhere near Panama City. So I'll have to prepare for that. Uh, you know, it's moving at three miles an hour now, but I did some measurements here, and it could still be a tropical storm Thursday. But look where they have it on Friday. That is, an, uh, that is how the consensus models are drying us out on Friday. The only model, I, once again, I could find, we like the model, but is the European. So this time we hope it is wrong. We don't want to have two days of rain from this system. But if you look at this measurement from South Carolina up into south of Cape Cod, uh, it's about 800 miles in 24 hours. It's, that looks like it's trying to travel at 29, 30 miles an hour, maybe up to 25 miles an hour when it comes over North Carolina. Just contrast that to what Florence was doing at two miles an hour. So this is going to be a quick mover, but boy, it could drop some showers and some breezy conditions. And right now, it looks like it'll do it on Thursday, the opening of the state fair. It's going to be humid. Okay. 
well, I guess it's because this person uploaded this video and said it could become a Cat 4. Oh, Coachella. Coachella 2018. What are you doing? It's Category 2. Oh, but is it even... Is it even a storm? Oh my god! It's kind of on radar. Broken in pieces. Oh, let's see. Come on. Let's see if we can spot any... Oh, anomalies. Let's call them anomalies. Okay? We'll call them anomalies. Well, you can see all the frayed edges on this precipitation. Frequencies are involved. How surprising. I don't mean to make light of this. I'm just, um, I don't know. You know, when you do this for six years and <laughs> you're constantly saying the same thing over and over and over again. Well, it takes an awful lot of effort to maintain your sanity. But, yeah, all of the frequencies you can see, the frayed edges, the straight lines. Uh, but who cares, really, right? This thing shot up with frequencies. Huh. Well, yeah, well, you know what I really wanted to show you is this. Yeah, you can see, before I get to this, you can see all of the signatures in this that it is manufactured. All of the straight lines, the geoengineering. Oh, the manufactured poof clouds, the straight lined clouds, and how they develop all of the uh, moisture. All right, well, you got another hurricane coming into Arizona. You have another hurricane coming into Arizona. Sergio. Okay, what was that? Uh, what was the last hurricane's name? I'm forgetting names. I've always been bad with names. This is Sergio's tracking. Oh, wow. All righty. So, there we go. Same exact track of that hurricane last week. Exact. Nearly exact. Um, but clearly obvious, the geoengineering. Come off. You're not going to come off, okay? Um, guys, what is taking place today is really unbelievable. How we could have our mainstream media reporting that there's a hurricane coming into Arizona at all. That should have been questions, but now we have another hurricane coming into Arizona. I going through, you know, Mexico and uh, heading towards Phoenix and New Mexico. And what? Nobody bats an eye. Well, I did say six years ago, if we couldn't get any of this stuff, that things are going to get more and more insane. And we're living it. We are living it. <laughs> we are living it. If you get up close, you see the grid patterns of the geoengineering. Let's just uh, take a look at, oh, wow, lots of frequencies going on here. 
a lot. Extremely low frequencies. Laser shot coming out of Georgia, going straight through where I live in Anderson, which is right here. These friggin' frequencies are nonstop. And how are you guys feeling? I'm not feeling well. Uh, but it's going straight on through. That's a long shot. Long shot. Right on into north, 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 northwest, north. West North Carolina and the East Coast is shining brightly. Look at all of the frequencies. Frequencies in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. Come on, bring in her tropical storm, hurricane. Michael. Houston, you're always shooting off your laser beams. But you got an awful lot of frequencies coming out of Austin. Doing their full range of at least 300 miles. Or maybe at the most 300 miles. Uh, do we have massive flooding going on in central United States? Sorry, haven't checked. Haven't checked yet. But that was my post yesterday. So we've got our frequencies. California shooting into the Pacific and wherever these extremely low frequencies are emitting it affects all life the side effects the effects I should say are uh, physical, mental, spiritual psychological, emotional We are at war. There's no doubt about it. And wow, that's a nice, nice looking laser shot into Arizona. Somebody said to me that <clears throat> that's extremely low frequencies. I think it's microwaves. You see the kind of Wi-Fi signal, but I do think it's uh, very powerful microwaves. Yep. Well, you're Rick Scott. Governor Guy, Florida. God, he seems like a little boy. You now to Tallahassee, where Florida Governor Rick Scott is holding a news conference regarding Tropical Storm Michael. Let's listen in. It is a rain. Tropical Storm Michael will bring dangerous storm surge to many areas, even those outside the path. If this storm hits Panama City, Tampa could still have storm surge. You cannot hide from storm surge, so get prepared and get out if an evacuation is ordered. This storm has the potential to bring devastating impacts to communities across the Panhandle and Big Bend, and every family must be prepared. All right, listen. Um, he warns you, you know, what happened last year with Irma. You guys, he's got that National Guard. He, he's deploying, I don't know, 5,500. He's got 500 on standby. He's got fish and wildlife. Uh, 50 of them on standby. He's got the the uh, vehicles, you know, to pull you out of a flood. He's got, I don't know, floaters and soakers and all of this stuff. And there he is. Is this National Guard? Get it. National Guard is U.S. Army. National Guard is no longer under the command of 
the governors. They have been usurped by the Coastal Guard, the Army. So, you know, they still pretend like we've got some terrific constitution, constitutional republic, and these governors, well, those states are independent of the federal government. All of it's bullshit. It's gone. Gone. These guys are just trying to maintain your delusion. But that delusion makes you very happy, doesn't it? So who the hell knows what's going to happen? Who knows what is going to happen with Sergio? Well, they failed greatly because they were calling for ma massive flooding in, in Arizona, in New Mexico, even in Colorado, but Utah and Idaho with that hurricane I can't remember the name of. Wow. It's kind of scary. Um, so they failed, so they bring Sergio. Let's get it right this time. And, well, I guess they didn't do enough destruction with uh, Florence, so they're trying again to get more areas flooded out. But maybe not, because we have seen so many failures. The mainstream media, well, they love to scare the shit out of you and get you all shopping and filling up your gas tanks. And, oh, well, he talked about possible evacuations. Not this guy. This guy. So, here we go again. Here we go again. And I guess, you know, Americans are just going to buy the horse shit that it's climate change and global warming. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't know what to do with this quote-unquote reality that we are living in. I just don't know what to do with it.